Welcome to The Backlash at Backlash.com. My name is Rod Van Mecklen, and in this video I'm going to read from my 2013 article, Sexual Harassment. Is it time to boycott female college students? The full article is linked below. In a video last week that included snarky color commentary from Gretchen Moltmanna, I briefly commented on a couple of recent announcements that college campuses are implementing new policies making it hazardous for college men to even look at college women. These articles are linked below and make this 2013 article more relevant today than it was two years ago. 2013 Olympia, Washington. Is it time to boycott female college students? The most important thing in life. Sex! The two women walking with the lovely redhead across the University of Washington campus were shocked to hear her say that to me. Had you seen her, you would have been astonished too. Athletic, freckles, red hair and blue eyes, and exceptionally intelligent. Me, a tall, lanky, and shy American Indian. We were both in a class taught by one of the more popular professors on campus. Earlier that day, he had challenged us to, to decide what was the most important thing in life. Her answer, sex. When her friends gasped, she explained that she didn't mean the going out and getting laid kind of sex, but sex in the abstract, survival of the species, species sense of the word. In 1980, you've got those kinds of conversations between students, conversations that are hardly the stuff of sexual harassment. Though in the case above, it made her friends uncomfortable, and the expressions on their faces and the tone of their voices made it very clear my presence was unwelcome. But there was nothing these upper middle class women, white women, could do about it. No retaliation they could take against an intense young working class Indian. But under a new blueprint for colleges and universities throughout the country issued in a joint letter by U.S. Department of Justice and U.S. Department of Education on May 9, 2013, that has changed. Quote, Sexual harassment is unwelcome conduct of a sexual nature and can include unwelcome sexual advances, requests for sexual favors, and other verbal, nonverbal, or physical conduct of a sexual nature, such as sexual assault or acts of sexual violence. Close quote. It's censorship, pure and simple. Quote, the stated goal of this policy is stemming discrimination, but the inevitable result will be advancing it in the form of content-based prohibitions on speech. When people demand censorship of unwelcome speech, they're usually demanding censorship of speech that they find unwelcome. They usually seek to silence their political or ideological opponents, not their friends, all in the name of some greater good." Close quote. Wendy Kaminer, No Sex Talk Allowed, The Atlantic, May 15, 2013. Any man who dares to defy this or is too dim to notice will suffer for it. Quote, Administration officials have also embraced popular feminist biases that require us to believe the victims reflexively. Accused students may even be punished before any finding of guilt. Close quote. Wendy Gaminer again. Now, obviously, sexual assault and acts of sexual violence should be and are against the law. They're criminal acts the kind that get you thrown into jail, if the local law and fair enforcers be fair and just. But most men know they have to risk enduring many no's to get just one yes. What we should take away from this new blueprint, however, is that college campuses have now become a no-whining men zone. Stop begging and start choosing. It's time for men to stop begging and start choosing. Make women do the work for a change. The feminist policy makers want to castrate men socially, if not physically, so give women what the misandrists want and leave them alone. Don't socialize with them, don't ask them out, don't make any moves on them, let them do all the work. Obviously, a lot of guys will laugh and ignore this, and a lot of them will have their lives ruined by the feminist perma-victims who troll for men to blame, shame, silence, and control. Those who don't believe that they need to make women do the heavy lifting will learn the hard way. Those who do believe it may not have as much fun in college as they hoped, but most men and women shouldn't be in college anyway. Few degrees actually teach anything of value, and first-year jobs in the back and oil fields pay more than most college graduates make anyway. 
Is college worth the expense? In Men and Marriage, author George Gilder noted that a married man who went to work right out of high school earned as much after four years as a single man who graduated after four years in college. The difference? The college graduate is laden with thousands of dollars in debt. Now remember, uh, George Gilbert wrote that book, oh gosh, that was an update of, it was either Sexual Suicide or Naked Nomads, and he had said the same thing in the first edition. So that was probably written in the mm, 70s or 80s, and the uh, Men in Marriage was written 92, 94, right in there, I think, or maybe 88 or 9. Regardless, of course, these days it's different. But uh, back then, a good marriage was more productive, more predictive of career success than a college degree. The fem feminazis knew this, which is one reason why they have worked for the better part of two generations to destroy the institution. They're making college an increasingly hostile environment for men and the road to a lifetime of debt for women. College is a waste of time and money for most people. Personally, I have a business degree which is worthless. If Aaron Clary's book, Worthless, The Young Person's Indispensable Guide to Choosing the Right Major, had been available when I was in school, I'd be millions of dollars richer today. So before anybody, man or woman, goes to college, they should buy and read Aaron's book. It's available on Amazon, and I bought and gave copies of it to my nieces and nephew. And as uh, I've mentioned in previous videos, I'm a member of the Cowlitz Indian tribe, and I have given, I have recommended, encouraged hundreds and hundreds of tribal members to get their children, grandchildren, to read that book. I'm having all multiple considerations about that right now that are irrelevant to this video. But in future videos, I will cover sexual harassment in greater depth. Thanks to the efforts of the feminist hate mongers, no man can afford to remain ignorant about this subject. That's all for now. Check out the other videos. Subscribe to the channel. Go to the backlash at backlash.com. My name is Rodman Mecklen.